There's no doubt that the AI wars are hotting up big time and Google have come out punching when it comes to a challenge to chat GPT. They've just basically said to chat GPT, here, hold my beer, as they made major announcements about Google Bard and changes to Google Bard and how it's going to be integrated into loads of other tools at their recent Google I.O. conference. And we've got all the lowdown. So let's check it out. Google I.O. was a major event for AI with Google announcing a number of new products and features. And we're going to go through some of the highlights. They include the fact that BARD, which is Google's large language model challenge to ChatGPT and others, is now available to everyone. I had access to it earlier, but now they've opened it up to everybody else. BARD's a real powerful tool that can be used for a variety of tasks, including, you know, generating text, translating languages, writing different kinds of creative content, all the similar things that we've seen with ChatGPT. In addition to that, Google is bringing generative AI to search as well. So this means Google will be able to generate summaries on your search. So we've started to see that with Microsoft and Bing as they've incorporated ChatGPT into Bing search. Well, Google is the king of search, so it makes sense that Bard is automatically wrapped up in all of that. And what it means is that Google will be able to generate summaries of search results, answer questions in an informative way, and even create new content. But there's more. Google is also releasing their new AI tools for things like Docs, Sheets, and Slides, and other third-party apps. Again, a bit like ChatGPT plugins. These tools are going to make it easier to create and edit documents, spreadsheets, presentations. Plus, and this is a big one for loads and loads of Gmail users, Google is adding AI writing tools to Gmail. And I tell you what, the demo was pretty impressive. These tools are going to help users write more clear and concise emails and loads of stuff like that. Plus, Google Maps is another one getting the AI treatment. Google is adding immersive views to Google Maps, which means this new feature will allow users to see 3D models of buildings and landmarks. These are just a few of the massive AI announcements that were made at Google I.O. 2023 a few days ago. It's clear that Google is absolutely committed to making AI more helpful for everyone. I mean, who would doubt it? So we're going to take a deeper dive into some of these announcements and show you some stuff. Plus, look at what Google Bard is, what powers it, and all of that. So let's get on with it. With the kind of a big announcement a few months ago of ChatGPT being incorporated into sort of Microsoft Edge and Microsoft Bing, it kind of sent an existential shudder across the bowels of the good ship Google. But it's no secret that Google have been working on similar language models for a long, long time. They've just chosen to sort of keep it behind closed doors for a bit longer as they sort of consider the implications of releasing AI out into the public, especially a super powerful AI, which we know Google will have. And so kind of in response to the chat GPT and Bing kind of combination, Google Bard was released in a kind of half-hearted limited fashion and as I said I got access to it and tried it and it was all right probably on a par with GPT-3 maybe GPT-3.5 but certainly not on a par with GPT-4 but of course Google Bard is free so that is a massive massive advantage secondly Google Bard is linked directly with the internet so it's entirely up to date unlike chat GPT which data set stops at September 2021. If you ask ChatGPT what Google Bard is, it'll have no idea. But we can ask Google Bard what Google Bard is, how it's powered and all of that. So why don't we do that? Go back to Bard. Google Bard basically is a large language model chatbot developed by Google AI. We know that. And it's powered by Palm 2, which is Google's most advanced LLM and is trained on a massive data set of text and code. Bard can generate text, translate languages, write different kinds of creative content and answer your questions in an informative way. And it's still under development. So we know this is really up to date because the big announcement at Google I.O. is that it's now powered 
by Palm 2, as it says here. The initial release of Google Bard was not powered by Palm 2. It was powered by a lesser la uh, language model. Google Bard is powered by Palm 2, which is big, big news. But we can kind of dive a bit further because Google also announced that Palm 2 comes in different formats and different sizes, as it were. So Palm 2 is a new state-of-the-art language model from Google AI. It's a transformer-based model trained on a massive data set of text and code, code generation. And that's a massive thing for Google Bard. And we'll come to it because it can generate code, it can debug code, and it can sort of analyze code for you. And it deals in loads and loads of programming languages as well. Palm 2 is significantly more powerful than its predecessor, Palm 1, and is able to perform many tasks that were previously considered impossible for language models. It can translate between languages with different kinds of creative content and answer your questions in an informative way, even if they're open-ended or strange. Google announced four different model versions of Palm 2, Gecko, the smallest model, uh, and that will work on mobile devices. So imagine you've got the power built into a mobile device. Otter, this is the medium-sized model with 540 parameters. So if we go back here, this is Palm 2, 540. So I'm assuming this one, 137 billion parameter, is, is Gecko. Then you've got Bison. This is a 1.3 trillion parameters designed for high performance tasks such as machine translation and question answering. And then you've got Unicorn with 10 trillion parameters and it's still under development. 10 trillion parameters. Now, at the moment, each model version has its own strengths and weaknesses. Gecko is the most efficient model. It's not powerful as the other models. Otter is a good balance between performance and efficiency and is a good choice for most tasks. Bison is designed for high performance tasks and is a good choice for tasks that require a lot of computing power. And Unicorn is still under development, but it's designed to be able to do anything that a human can. Anything that a human can. Version, so which, which model version powers Bard? Bard is powered by the Otter model. So it's the 540 billion. So just put that in context how many parameters does chat gpt4 have chat gpt4 has 540 billion parameters according to this it's saying otter is on a par yeah i thought it had more but there we are 540 billion so 10 trillion parameters chat gpt is delivering what it's delivering on 540 billion parameters and Bard is delivering what it's delivering on 540 billion parameters. Oh my gosh, what happens when we get to 10 trillion parameters? But of course, it's not just about the big numbers and stuff. It's what you do with it. That's what she said. Yeah. So uh, let's dive a bit more and see what Google were doing with it. Google is planning to integrate Bard with a number of tools, including Google Search, Google Docs, which it already does. So I can print this out. Look here, I can just go export and I can export it straight to an email, you know, my Gmail or straight to a doc just by clicking on this button. So there's one click button there, Google Sheets, Google Slides, Google Meet, and of course, Google Maps. And it's working with a number of third party developers as well on integrating it with other tools and other services. This is going to make Bard more accessible and allow it to be used for a wider range of tasks and also make Google's products and services more powerful and user friendly. So in this example, they've used specifically for a, a move in chess in, to be generated in Python and kind of expresses that, that move. How would I use Python to generate the scholars mate move in chess? I'm not a nerd. I don't know what that is. And then it basically breaks it all down here. And not only that, then it formats the code in kind of a nice, neat way so that it explains what each bit of the code means. Now, I've done a bit of coding in Bard, and this was before the Google I.O. announcements, and uh, it wasn't as good as ChatGPT. In fact, some of the code, it didn't really work, and it kind of got lost a bit, didn't quite achieve what I wanted, and I found better success using ChatGPT. But it would be interesting to see... Um, how more effective Google Bard is now with its kind of focus on programming and coding. Perhaps the biggest announcement, or at least the announcement got the biggest applause, was the fact that you've got dark mode now. Uh, so if we have a quick look here, down here, I can just swap. I mean, I'm a dark mode fan myself. I love, 
you know, dark and does my eyes in here. But yeah, so that's quite a cool thing. But it probably got the biggest uh, applause uh, in terms of announcements. The other big announcement, as I said, was the integration of Bard with tools, including obviously the Google suite of tools like Docs, Sheets and Maps and stuff like that, but also other tools and more importantly, Adobe Firefly, which is an AI text to image thing from Adobe, obviously. And they also do really interesting text so you can create different texts. I did a whole video on this on a different channel. It's really kind of quite cool. It's not on the same level as, say, Mid Journey, but some really interesting things. And now it's integrated with Google Bard. So you can ask specifically for images within Google Bard and it will create it within Adobe Firefly, which is, you know, a pretty good AI art generation tool. Another integration they talked about was its integration with Google Lens. So allowing you to upload pictures and then use that as a prompt effectively. So in this example, they talked about uploading a picture of your dog and then writing a kind of funny catchphrase. And it was quite effective, as you'll see. So, I mean, that's quite impressive, really, and it's quite witty, actually. But this is taking the way you interact with Bar to a whole new level. You can't be uploading images to ChatGPT and then asking it, you know, to come up with some creativity and stuff like that. And I guess the ability is, you know, maybe to get it to describe what it sees in the picture and then transfer that to mid-journey. Here they're asking specifically about finding help with finding an animation college in Pennsylvania, and then it's going to list out those choices, as we'd expect, Here's these different examples. But then you can say, okay, now show me on a map. And sure enough, it goes to Google Maps. And there you are. It integrates, you know, seamlessly with the Google tools. Really, really powerful stuff. And then they go on how you can then say, okay, put it into a table. Now add a column to that table and all of that. And it all does it automatically. And then, of course, you can output it to Google Sheets. So this integration is making Google Bard a really powerful tool. Now, we know we're going to see ChatGPT integrated with the Microsoft um, Office suite of tools and stuff like that. I think it's going to be called Copilot or something like that. But it's already great to see Google is integrating Bard with its existing tools in this manner. And as I mentioned, not just Google tools they're integrating it with. They're integrating with a whole host of third-party tools whether it's Spotify, Indeed, Instacart, Walmart, Replit, Adobe, Uber Eats, Kayak, OpenTable, TripAdvisor, FiscalNote. As you see, a whole bunch of third-party apps are being included. So if you can see what you can do with, you know, asking it to plot places on a Google map, well, imagine you say, okay, now uh, order me that food or whatever from Uber Eats or whatever it is instantly or, you know, book me that table on Open Table or book me this holiday on Kayak. They're expanding Google Bar to 180 plus countries and territories in English, though, but already they're making it available in Korean and Japanese. And they're currently training it on loads of loads of other languages. But it's not the only place that Google are including generative AI. They're also including it in their Pixel phones in a really cool way. Now, I'm not sure this is powered necessarily by Bard, but it's powered by Google's generative AI. And basically what it does is it allows you, well, it will write your messages for you. If you, you sort of say what you want to say, so for instance here in this one, you say, want to grab dinner? Uh, and then it gives you, you hit that magic compose button there, and then it gives you options, whether they're excited options, chill, Shakespearean, Prithy, shall we dine tonight, etc. And you might say, what is the point of that? But sometimes you just can't, I don't know, necessarily sum up the words or the right expression. This is perfect for lazy people like that. And you just press that magic compose. So the integration with Gmail is also really cool because it helps you compose emails. So in this example, for instance, the customer here uh, has a cancelled flight and uh, they offer them uh, a voucher. So the airline offers them a voucher and they go, no, that's not, I'm not happy with that. I'm, you know, my flight's been cancelled. I'm a bit annoyed. So you use the magic compose button here and you basically here, you say, actually, you ask magic compose. I want a full refund for this flight. I'm not being bobbed off with a voucher. It goes away and it creates a response right within Gmail. And here you go. Thanks to the voucher. However, I'd like to request a full refund for my cancelled flight. I understand you're offering a voucher as a gesture of goodwill, but I'd prefer to be reimbursed for my cost of the flight. Firm, but polite. 
saves you having to think about how do I express it? You know, some people really struggle when they're sort of not happy with customer service. There's plenty of people out there who don't struggle, although in a different kind of way. But this is a perfectly pleasantly kind of firm but clear rebuttal of a voucher saying, no, I want my I want my refund, please. Then you can choose to refine it and say, look, elaborate, extend it a bit more. So you just press that button and then straight away, look at this. Suddenly, it's kind of added a bit more kind of oomph or power to your kind of complaint here. I've been a loyal customer of your airline for many years. I've been and I've always been satisfied with your service. However, I'm very disappointed with the way my recent flight was handled, blah, blah, blah. I believe a full refund is the only fair way to compensate me for the problems I experience. I've enclosed a copy of my original ticket for your reference. Boom. Now, you could go to ChatGPT or you could go to Bard and you could ask it to write a letter, explain the context. But the fact that it's built into Gmail, it knows the context already. It writes it straight into uh, Gmail for you to reply. Really, really cool, I think. I mean, uh, it's uh, for someone like me, you know, sometimes I just kind of sit and stare at a blank Gmail thinking, how am I going to respond? How am I going to, you know, compose, express what I want to say without being too aggressive, without, you know, I want to be polite, but firm, that kind of stuff. This sort of thing is absolutely ideal. And the fact, as I say, it's built into the tools you use every day. So there you go. Some really exciting stuff from Google Keynote, especially around Bard. There's loads of other things and I'll be talking about those as well, this whole AI thing competition, when you're seeing two massive Goliaths like Microsoft and Google go toe to toe, hopefully we as customers benefit from the results of this massive AI arms race. Anyway, I hope you found that useful. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, please hit the likes because I like it. YouTube likes it and it helps people like you find content like this. And if you are new here, do me the great honor, hitting that subscribe button, toggling that notification bell, and that way you'll know when I go live with content just like this. And if you want to see more content like this, why don't you check out the videos over here, the ones over here. I think you'll enjoy them. Thanks.